Hello critters, welcome to today's 3D print. Today, we're going to make something for the kittens. They keep knocking over these bowls. I love these bowls because they're stainless steel, they're convenient, and they're a dollar piece. Um, so I have six of them all over the house. You know, we have three food station drinking stations all over the house. So I'm going to make a holder on my 3D printer to hold these bowls, to keep them from being knocked over, and to make it look nice. Stay tuned. So first I have to apologize, I was hand holding the camera on the screen. I still haven't gotten a screen recorder to work yet on my laptop. Once I do though, that'll be a lot easier. Um, but I kept drifting and so I'd start turning the camera this way and you'd start losing what was on the screen and I'd bring it back. <laughs> so I apologize for that. Eventually I'll get a setup that works well for that. But we are going to use Tinkercad today to make the holder for the bowls. And then I'm going to show you some neat little tricks to um, Get, first of all, get vase mode in a print that normally wouldn't be vase mode, and also to add reinforcements to a vase mode print while retaining vase mode printability. So that's cool. So here's an interesting dilemma. I want to make a relatively complex, at least complex as far as Tinkercad goes, shape here. I need a dish holder for the cat bowls. They keep knocking them over. So I'm going to make a vase mode printable holder, so they have a 1.2 millimeter nozzle. But I don't want this silly shape like this. I mean, I could do that. But what I want is for this to be a solid shape, meaning all this to be filled in. So how do I do that? You can't really do that in Tinkercad. Well, you kind of can. These are the holes for the actual cap bowls. They only go four millimeters deep because that's as far as I'm going to make this thick. And then the rest will be vase mode. Okay, so that's why they're separate and not melded yet or blended yet because they're going to be separate. I then made a one millimeter thick wall here, centered it on this, so that it is perfectly centered at the widest point this is going to be. Okay, now if you look, I duplicated this one, made it a hole, and cut it out of this. So if you look at this, that is my shape. So now all I have to do, let me undo that, is put a square box in here something kind of like this that will go to this center point and this center point and then take this turn it into a cut tool and make it as wide as the whole thing and then cut and that'll make this box the same profile shape as this giving me my desired shape then I cut my two holes out of it for the bolts pretty neat so stay tuned I want to try that so as you can see, I duplicated my little cut plane here and centered it on this one. Now the way you do that is you select one object, then you hold down the shift key and select the other object. You can then hit the, com uh, the alignment tool right here. And then what you do is before you do anything, you hold down the shift key and you select this object again. What that does is that anchors that object so it doesn't move. Because I need to make sure that doesn't move because it's in the correct position relative to the other one. And then when I align it, it keeps the purple piece in place and moves the red piece to where it needs to be. So now I need to make this beige block as wide as both halves of this. I think I can do that by putting a work plane here. And then I can move this to the zero point. That's not quite working as I expected it to. Oh, I think I need to put the work plane on this side. And now I should be able to move this until it's a zero. Yeah, there we go. So now change this to zero. And that puts it exactly on that work plane. Okay. Now to get this side, I think the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to duplicate this and use it as a cut tool. So I'm going to purposely make this box bigger than I need it. And then use this as a cut tool to cut it so that this box is exactly as big as it needs to be. But I'll duplicate this first because I need it for the... Actually, I don't need it for the second operation. I only need one. So we'll get back to that in just a minute. Okay, so now these two are 0.1 millimeter wide. And I centered them. I made this a little bit too big but flat on this one here. I think I did. Let me double check that. So put the work plane here. This should be the other way. There it is. Why is that? Oh, I'm grabbing the wrong piece. 
So I grab this piece, lift it up a little bit, which gives me this little measurement here, change that to zero, and it puts it exactly where it needs to be. I then widened this bit here to cover up the end of this that is too big, that's sticking out. So now I take this and I make it a hole, and then I join it with this piece here, and hit combine, and that chops it off on the end there, as you can see, although what is that? I don't know what that part is. I guess that's the part that's inside. That's okay. Now I take this piece. I grab this. That is not what I wanted. This. Oh, I got the plane in the wrong one. So I'll put the plane back down here. Now when I grab this, see that? It becomes as wide as the whole thing. I just make it as wide as the whole bowl. I turn it into a cut tool. Okay. Now the trick is, how do I select just those two? Oh, they stick out. So now I take, actually I'm gonna duplicate this. Control D and then hide it. And now I select just these two, combine, and there you go. Now I have my angled bowl shape. Now I take all of these and combine them together. But first, let's combine the purple and the beige. There, purple and beige are now one piece. Okay. And now I combine my holes. And boom, there we go. Let me pick a different color, make it easier for you to see. There we go. I'm not entirely sure what these little cracks are. That's little artifacts of messing with... Tinkercad, but they should not show up. Worst case scenario, run it through NetFab. But now when I print this, it'll be printed with no infill and no top because this is going to print upside down. So this surface here will be on the base of the printer. This is a four millimeter hole. So as long as the um, my first solid layers do not go past four millimeters and I won't let them, I'll do 10 layers since it's a 0.4 millimeter um, extrusion then the rest of this will be hollow and I will have my bowl shape. Let me show you what that looks like in the slicer. I went over to NetFab just in case. I always run my files through NetFab. So if there's any small manifold inconsistencies or something weird like that, this should take care of that, which will download a fixed file. Well, it's 417 millimeters wide, which means even on my Chiron, I cannot print this straight across. But as you can see, I can print it diagonally. The next thing I'm going to do is, well, let me undo this first so I don't get no weird artifacts. But we're going to take Y, or is it X? I think it's X, and rotate it 180 degrees. Then center and arrange. Yes, that's fine. Okay, it's going to force me to actually rotate it in order to center and arrange it. There we go. There. Now it sits on the bed upside down, just like that. And this here is 4 millimeters thick. Okay, so my first process is going to stop at four millimeters. And then I'm going to control CV that process to get a second process. And this process will start at four millimeters. Okay, oops, sorry, you were out of camera view there. All right, so this first process is going to be a relatively normal process. We're going to print at 0.96 multiplier. We are going to print at a 0.4 millimeter layer height. Top and bottom solid layers are going to be 5 and 5. A little update, this is actually incorrect. You need to use 10 bottom layers, not 5 top and 5 bottom. It's a little bit of a quirk in Simplify 3D, but if I have something that's 4 millimeters thick at 0.4 millimeter layers and I tell it to do 5 and 5, it prints 5 bottom and then 5 infill. But if I tell it to print 10 bottom, it prints 10 bottom with no infill. Not sure why it does that little quirk. 5 and 5 should work. It doesn't. Maybe because technically that first process has no way of knowing that the second process is going to be vase mode and that space is technically going to be open to us. But from the model's perspective, that's internal model space. So there is no actual top layers. So it prints infill. That's almost certainly why it does that. You'll see in a moment. And the perimeters, um, three should do it. I'll be three, so that'd be a nice 3.6 millimeter perimeter. 
Okay, so five and five, this guarantees there will be no infill, that the first ten layers are going to be solid, because that's going to be the part that the food rests on. Additions, there is room for a skirt, so we are going to use one. One perimeter at ten millimeters away will be fine. Uh, infill doesn't matter because there won't be any. We are within the specs of my solid layers. No support. Heat bed at 60. Primary extruder 215 and then go to 225. It's actually the reverse of what I normally do. Um, because the first layer is moving slower, if the temperature is too high, you get some popping in the filament. But once you start moving faster, you need the higher temperature because you're extruding so much plastic. So my first layer is 215 and then my second layer is 225, which is the opposite of what I normally do. Cooling, 100% at layer 3, that is fine. We're going to leave this all alone, leave scripts all alone. Um, 35 millimeters per second, the Chiron is actually able to maintain that. So on my other printers, like my Ender 3, I got around 30 millimeters per second, but the Chiron can do 35, which is cool. Um, that's it, this is all finished. Now our second set, we're going to increase the extrusion multiplier to 1.25. So we're going to over extrude slightly. And we are going to change this to a 0.4 as well. And we're going to get rid of the top and bottom layers. Set the outline perimeter to 1. And enable single outline corkscrew mode. That is vase mode. Additions don't matter. Infill, leave it at 0 just in case. No support. Temperatures are the same except at uh, layer 1 we're going to stay at 60. But we're going to turn the fan off. We're going to go to layer 30. And we're going to turn the heat bed off. Um, actually, sometimes I find it's better to gradually do it. So we're going to go to 50. <laughs> Anybody see the problem with this yet? Add set point. And then at layer 40, we're going to go to 40. Add set point. And then at layer 40, 50, we're going to go to 0 because that's getting close to ambient and the heat bed will turn off. So this heat bed will go from 60, 50, 40 to zero. So that by the time it's done printing, the heat bed will be off. Cooling, 100, 100, that's what I want. Let me remind me to double check that first one to make sure the first one is zero. Um, G code's fine, script's fine, speed's 35 is fine, other is fine. Now here, merge all outlines into a solid model. We're gonna enable that. So just in case there's some funniness inside the model, That'll get rid of it. Like if there's a small hole or something like that, that'll merge and heal it all together. Just in case there's an issue. This is all fine. Let's double check cooling on my first layer. Yep, I need to make that zero. So there's no cooling until layer three. Now, when I prepare to slice this, you'll see all this goes away. Select all, continuous printing by layer. And I did, did not work right. So what did I do wrong? Uh, that means something is not quite right. One. This is where I discovered that it's not treating all the layers the same because technically this is a solid model. To me, that's a top layer because it's open, it's phase mode. But to the software, it's a solid model still. So that's not a top layer, that's an internal layer. And since I only told it to do five bottom, it's doing the other five until it reaches the four millimeter limit um, as infill. Also, the cutout tool that I used to make that 4mm hole, I goofed up and it was only 3mm. So that's why I was getting those solid top layers filling in the circle. I went back to Tinkercad and discovered that. Okay, there it goes. Um, for some reason, my little cutout that I used to cut the hole out was a lot shorter than I thought. It looks like I made it 3mm. So I actually had to pretty dramatically increase the size of this to get the... Um, the cutout to be more than four millimeters deep. That was my bad. I goofed up in Tinkercad. I noticed it because it was only, this was only eight layers, and it still had two more to go. So of course it filled in the top. So I just made it a little taller, 85 millimeters, and it's fine. So I'll have to modify that file before I post it. But there you go. So first one stops at four millimeters. Um, with ten bottom. One is, of course, zero, zero, and one with an over extrusion so that I will have a nice thick bottom. Prepare to print, select both processes, and there you go. So this will be four millimeters thick, so it'll be nice and strong. It's actually going to take quite a lot of plastic, 264 grams, not so bad. Um, 
but there you go that will print on my Chiron and then once it gets to this part here it's vase mode so this whole print will take five hours that's pretty fast for such a large print um, I, I was thinking about putting some kind of a bridge in here in between the two it would be annoying to do but not that hard basically you put um, a, a slit in here that is um, 0.2 millimeters wide and it'll actually negotiate vase mode around that slit um, and that will give me a little bit of rigidity in here I think I just might do that I am, I'm worried about that not being rigid enough you'll end up with a seam on the backside which is fine but um, you can trick it into doing vase mode for that entire shape if you do that and that'll give me that little bit of rigidity that I would like to have there so I think I will do that in Tinkercad. Yep, I just confirmed in Tinkercad my little cutouts here that make the holes in my plate were only going three millimeters deep, which is why I was getting those top layers. So I sank them six millimeters in to guarantee that however it's scaled, you're not going to have that problem. Now I'm going to try to insert my little cutout here to um, make this thing print in vase mode. What I've done here is I create this little cutout here is 0.2 millimeters thick. Now you remember I hid one of these little cutouts to make that shape? Well, this is where that's going to come in handy. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hide this, get it out of my way. You'll see why I need that in a moment. I'm then going to take this and change its size very carefully. I need to actually I can just do the length so if I just do this I can just make it smaller that's not what I wanted I guess I have to do it from this end two five zero there we go I just need to make it bigger than a purple piece but smaller than the cut tool piece okay now that's already selected so be careful not to mess up your selection because otherwise it's gonna be hard to grab that you'll have to hide this and then unhide it okay so now I hit shift and select the cut tool and now I'm going to merge them which is going to then cut that to the shape I need now here's the trick I need to move it 1.2 millimeters down this way so that it does not cut this thing and bisect it in half so the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to change this to 0.25 and then I'm going to go down 1, 2, 3, 4, 1. Okay, now it's sticking out a little bit here and not sticking out here. Turns out I don't need to do what I thought I was going to need to do. So that's good. Now the next thing I have to do is put the plane on this piece. Got it. Okay, now I need to move that piece down three millimeters or four millimeters. We decided to make it a little thicker. So change the movement to one millimeter and one, two, three, four, four millimeters. That's all I need. Okay, this way I'm not going to bisect the, um, the top. So the top will still be solid as you can see here. And you can see it's just sticking out a little bit right there. Okay. Now here's where the other neat little trick comes into play. You notice it's not quite sticking out the side quite enough. It might not actually cut that. So beforehand, I duplicated this piece. Now I'm going to unhide it. And then I'm going to... Um, oh, I forgot I need to make that shape the same. So we're going to hide this again because that's my little spare tool that I'm using. Okay, we're going to put a box, work plane on here, box on here. Uh -huh, uh -huh. We just need to cut off the top of this and then shift hold. I keep turning the camera away from the screen. I'm sorry about that. I need to get a rig set up to do this. So shift and click and then merge. There we go, and it wasn't tall enough, of course. So I need to make my little box here a little taller. Select. And then shift, click. 
And my mouse that moved again. Thank you very much for being a pain. Shift, click, merge. Okay. Um, then I need to move this down the same four millimeters. Work plane, select this. One, two, three, four. There we go. Now I'm going to hide this because I need to select these two pieces here, join them, okay? Put my work plane back where it belongs, turn this into a hole, unhide, oh, I hit it, that's okay, there we go. Rehide my little backup tool again, and I turn the screen away from the phone again. So now I have this little cut tool sticking out, putting my little groove into the side of the model, okay? My extrusion is 1.2. I moved it 1.25. That should be a good fudge factor. Now I take these two pieces and cut. There. Now I have that little slot in the model. You're going to see what that does in a minute. Reinsert my tool cuts here. Merge. There we go. That should do it. Let's download this again. Run it through NetFab. Make sure it's all clean and see what it does there we are we have success as you can see i'm in vase mode on the top here i have retractions enabled so you can see them if there's any retractions and there are no retractions how cool is that so what happens is you nope know, i keep forgetting the the mouse keys to move things in in simplify 3d are slightly different than tinkercad so in Tinkercad, I have to hold down the middle click button in order to drag the entire model around like this without changing the orientation. But if you do that in Simplify 3D, it resets the view. So in Simplify 3D, um, you use the right click to do this. So now you can see here, see that little joint there? See? That's because there's a hole here. And so it, it does its circle, like say it starts here, it goes around, comes around, and then it comes in here, back out again, and then around. And it keeps doing that in vase mode. And because of um, the slight discrepancies in 3D printers and the fact that I'm over extruding, this will melt into this. And these two are close enough together that they will melt together. So um, you might be able to force them apart, but they'll be attached. And you can see there is a 0.2 millimeter gap in there. You could probably do 0.1, but I think 0.2 will work fine. You can just see inside there. You can see the infill at the bottom there. But because I'm over extruding, these two will overlap and they will be sealed together. So now I have a vase mode print, but I have a little reinforcement rib right here in the middle. And that makes it a very fast print, five hours, 21 minutes. And this thing is big. This is 417 millimeters across, 65 millimeters tall. But because I can do it in vase mode with a 1.2 millimeter extrusion, it's both fast and strong. That's it, now I'm gonna go print it. There we go, the print has begun. So about five hours and 10 minutes, that will be done. Probably more like five and a half hours. So you can see here, it's in vase mode. But I have that little section in the middle because of that little slit that I put in the model, which allows it to complete a continuous path. But because it's so close, it's actually melted together. See, watch, it's going to go in the middle here now. Isn't that cool? That is just neat. I like that. So who guessed it? Yep, I haven't put Wham Bam on the Chiron yet. It's still a glass plate. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> well, I'm a dumbass. Can anybody tell me why? Yeah, I programmed the heat bed to turn off. I haven't put Wham Bam on here yet. This is a glass plate. Can't turn off the heat, Chris. <laughs> Gotta start over again. Well, there we go. It finished printing last night. Interestingly enough, I ran out of filament. I knew I would. I figured, let's see what happens when the filament run out happens. And shout out to Anycubic. The heat bed stayed on, the nozzle stayed on, and the nozzle lifted up out of the way of the print so it didn't melt into it. 
I loaded new filament, hit continue, and it resumed the print. Good job, Anycubic. So as you think, it's vase mode. And you have this two layer path that comes in here to allow it to actually complete the vase mode. So it does a circuit. Then it comes in, back, and continues the circuit. So the way that works is that this cutout, I put a slit in the model, as you saw in Tinkercad, and that slit stops 1.2 millimeters from the wall here, 1.25 actually, so that it doesn't actually connect to this here, creating two different islands, okay? And then this gap is 0.2 millimeters wide. So it actually has a valid vase mode path that allows it to install this reinforcement without not being able to do vase mode. Very cool. And because the gap is basically zero, it still melds together. This is still attached, especially since I'm running the vase at 1.25 extrusion. That allows me to print that in five hours. It's nice and strong and it's fast and it looks good too. I like that. That's Atomics Ultra Orange. You can see that little tiny seam right there where it moves in, but it doesn't do it up there. Very cool. So now I have a holder for the kitty cat stuff. I just realized I need a handle. There we go. Now I have a holder for the bowls and you can get these bowls at Dollar Tree. Very cool. I also made a half size one that's just one half so that if you do not have a larger printer that can print something 400 millimeters across, well, 311, I'm working on that, you can print two of these and just glue them together. Or if you only need one and you want to mount that against the wall, you can do that since you have now a flat side. So you have the half size piece and you have the full size piece. I've also modified this file to optimize and make it as small as possible. I can now print this in three hours and 20 minutes. So all these gaps are removed. The two balls sit right next to each other. And I think if I straighten out the four corners, I can make this printable on a CR10. I can't make it any smaller than the new one that's printing. But um, I might be able to chop the corners. It's 11 millimeters too big, even at an angle. So those files will be on Thingiverse. So here's the original one I printed that was a little on the large side. I like the, I ran out of the, atomic uv orange so i switched to filament one iron gray and i really like the combo of the orange and the gray looks nice then here's the one that's all iron gray and this is the corrected one this is the one you'll be downloading so as you can see the balls are a much tighter fit much closer together but this one is still just a hair too big to fit on a cr10 so you need something bigger than a cr10 to print that but i have a solution to that and here's the solution to that. This one here has the corners nicked out a little bit. And that is just enough to allow this to fit on a CR10. So if you have a 300 by 300 build volume printer, you can print this one. It's the one marked cropped. And if you have an even smaller printer, if you're looking at like Ender 3 kind of printer, I have a half one you can print. You just print two of those. And that's it. I'm gonna go install this for the one by my sister's room. I used a gradient splendid filament, so it went from that yellow gold to pink to purple, which is pretty cool. Well, that's it. Not quite super organized or, you know, I got to do some things about setting up a rig to make that kind of video better, but I hope you enjoyed it. I will put this file on Thingiverse. I'm also going to split it in two so you can print the two halves and then glue them together so people with a printer not large enough to print that can print it. In fact, split into two, I believe an Ender 3 could print it. So I will confirm that and I will upload it to the universe. That's it. You guys have a great night. I hope you enjoyed it.